Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of On Air with Owen and I am joined today by Lisa Ansel and Lisa is from Sales Geek um, and the London uh, London area of Sales Geek. So our friends and partners Sales Geek up north and they've uh, branched out into London and Lisa's, Lisa's joined that organisation to head up that, uh, head up that operation. Lisa is a BD specialist but also an author of a book called Pull Not Push, and I'm gonna, the, the, the little subtitle bit is the bit that got me going, which is a revolution in selling for people who hate it, uh, which I think is a fantastic, fantastic <laughs> book title. Um, and that's that's very much what we're gonna talk about today, is just the notion of, um, I guess, what you believe in in sales, what pushes you along, what motivates you, what keeps you going, what drives your purpose, which is a word that, that I've heard Lisa use a, a few times. But Lisa, firstly, thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us today. How, how are things at the moment? Oh, you are very, very welcome. And things are incredibly hectic, actually. <laughs> I, I, I like the days just zoom past in this blur of fabulousness, which is completely brilliant. You know, it's totally the way I want to live my life, right? <laughs> Love it. Love the energy. A, a blur of fabulousness sounds like a good blur to me. <laughs> um, well, let's let's get into it. Um, as you know, we like to dive straight into topic on this uh, on this podcast. But, but I think but before we do that, we typically try and give two minutes, two minutes to, just to tell us about Lisa. Who's Lisa? A bit about yourself and a bit about Sales Geek, just so people have got some background. Yeah, so who am I? So I have got uh, far too many years in sales, right the way from the ground floor. Um, I've got over 35 years. <clears throat> I'm not really that old. Um, <laughs> sales but I've literally done everything at every level um, I started off in property and had my first property company at 21 so I was always a little bit of a, a renegade a little bit of a rebel wanted to do things my way and um, then went into finance and um, FMCG went into recruiting had 14 years in recruiting um, had my own company a specialist headhunting company for nine of those years ran international and international companies and then dropped out. I actually did my whole drop out of society and corporate and went and did something wonderful that fed my soul, working with young people and charities and all kinds of bits and pieces. But then came back with a vengeance because um, because corporate and, and the commercial world, which is just brilliant brain candy for me, was calling me back. So rejoined and did my own thing. So I was a business consultant. Um, so, re, you know, a sales director, sort of an interim sales director for SMEs, helping them drive their business forward, creating solutions, creating processes and all that sort of stuff. And it was from that and I realised it was just me. Um, and I was the only resource and but there were lots of people that wanted my help but I just couldn't spread myself thin and pe not everybody can afford somebody like that so I decided to make the I tried to to to, to understand so it's I always say to everybody it's it's all very well you being great at something but unless you can recreate it or teach it or learn it or you know create a process that reflects it that's only ever going to be you um, and you're never going to build a, an empire. So that's what I did. I went about breaking down what it is that I do that works, that's brilliant, that's been tried and tested and all of that and um, sort of package it in a way. So everybody. So my book, Pull Not Push, was written for entrepreneurs, people who were had brilliant ideas most of them are but they're not salespeople, and I wanted to give them the opportunity to be successful in having business discussions and creating a route to market without actually selling and that's what it is the world's most reluctant sales person gives back what she's learned to everybody else who doesn't can't won't doesn't want to sell but it's been really well received and a lot of people have really changed their perspective on how they perceive you know promotions selling you know and being able to take their product to market so yeah that's who I am very interesting thank you very much and, and look, you, you said something that I hadn't actually thought about or plans to ask uh, in this conversation but I'm going to anyway which is around the notion of founders of businesses people who have an idea go and start something who don't have a sales background yeah. um, and, 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 and that's a tough gig because, I mean, we all work in sales ultimately, but if if no one else does outside of salespeople, it's founders of businesses. Um, 
And that's a really tough place to start. What would you say to founders who are thinking of going out there and maybe don't have that sales experience? Where would you point them to? What would be some of the advice you might give to those people? Well, apart from buy my book, <laughs> really cheekily. I mean, that's just from that and we'll just move on. We, we can hit yeah. end now if you like. <laughs> <laughs> I think the thing is, is that, you know, the, the way that entrepreneurs who aren't salespeople, the way they sell is through passion, understanding, yeah. you know, and just sometimes just going out and telling everybody what it is you do and how brilliant it is, mm-hmm. um, is enough to carry you through. But realistically, what you have to then is, but you get stuck in your own head. My experience of these brilliant entrepreneurs, these founders, these creators, they're creative types, they're inventors, they're all kinds of things like that, is really just to get out of your own head and actually focus on who is going to connect with your product the same way as Mm. you connect with it. So Mm. who, who is it that believes, needs, wants, um, what you believe, need and want, you know, what, where, who, who, how do you seek them out? What is it that you do? And that sort of area of understanding what your market is and how your message is going to be received by them or how best to get your message out there. That's kind of the biggest one. And then it's just about asking the right questions and about really, you know, questioning your customer what their needs are you know mm. because they are what the, the biggest thing that i found is when you're super excited about something you kind of talk at people yeah. rather than pulling them back in and that's what the whole pull not push thing is about is about pulling them into that conversation by creating clever Socratic so- process, like clever mm. questions to take them through their buyer journey. So they yeah. don't necessarily have to think about it, but it is all about them. So make it about them, get out of your own head and pull in, be very customer centric and pull them in and pull them through that journey. Why do you think, so you've obviously chosen to write about this, but you also, you know, you, you're in with sales teams all day, every day and sales leaders and founders trying to, trying to help them navigate this world. And you've chosen a, a title which is revolutionary selling for people who hate it, because I think we can all acknowledge now that a lot of people do, whether that's looking from the outside and perceiving to hate it or whether that's being in it and not enjoying it. There's a lot of that. What is it about sales in your, your, in your view that, 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 that kind of has that reputation? And where, where's that come from? And why do people dislike it so much at times? I think it I think we've all been a little bit burnt or a little bit we've had poor experience of poor selling yeah. and I think everybody you know and then it's like well I don't really want to be associated with that because it does because it's not it doesn't feel nice yeah. you know and I always say to everybody it doesn't matter what you say what you how you make people feel is going to be the thing that they get left with. And because we're left with a little bit of a bitter taste in our mouth or we feel like we've been duped or tricked. And I've done tons of sales training, like yeah. tons. You know, I've gone through the stuff that all the car people, say, you know, the, all the all, anybody who sells cars, their processes is very, very intense and very specific and very conscripted. And, you know, and, and actually it, it didn't feel nice. It didn't feel right for me. So, you know, um, and I, I don't think it necessarily plays into and I don't think the, the in the past, I think it's changing massively, but I don't think in the past it's played into or even it has sat well with being a decent human being. Yeah. You know, so I've turned it around. So it's a, like it's all about, you know, your agenda, what you need to do, what your targets are, what your pressures are, what your boss is telling you, you know. And I guess, you know, we all desperately want to achieve and succeed because that's where that's where we've decided to place ourselves. But um, I think a lot of the sales training and the sales tricks and ruses and quips and, you know, that sort of stuff just makes mm. just leaves me a bit cold actually and like you know it's like mm, don't don't really like it mm. so I wanted to change all of that and I wanted to to kind of turn it on its head and that's the reason why I joined Sales Geek because they are absolutely aligned mm. with, with my thoughts and feelings on how to do that because most people n- don't decide to go in sales 
they kind of fall into it for either economic reasons or they needed a job or yeah. you know that person was hiring or you know yeah. for whatever reason but we know we don't it's like recruitment nobody nobody actually decides they're gonna you know at school oh you know what I want to do I want to be a recruitment consultant it really yeah. just falls into it mm. so I think it's something you fall into if a you like if you're competitive, if you're lively, yeah. if you're influential, if you have, if you're a good storyteller, yeah. if you're good with people, I think you naturally get pulled into that arena. But mm. I think it's something we should wear with pride and know that there are things that we can do to mm. really change people's experience. So hopefully we turn a corner with that. Mm. It's interesting. You you touched you used the word a few times already where you touched on the human element of somebody yeah. and building trust and building a relationship. And I think I've got a theory that 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 you know you can make a fairly average personality a reasonably good salesperson through process, but you can't make them yeah. a great salesperson. Whereas you can make a fairly uh, a poor process follower an exceptional salesperson if they've got the right personality. And I think you 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 kind of touched on that there, aren't you? The fact that the greatest salespeople in the world aren't necessarily those that follow the pro- process perfectly. They're the ones that are authentic. They're the ones that 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 have the je ne sais quoi or whatever we want to refer to it as in their personality that they can. I like your phrase, pull people in. Yeah, do you know what? I'm going to be horribly confident, controversial. Go on. Disagree with you vehemently. Sure. <laughs> I love it because I, I, I interestingly the most successful sales team that I ever worked with was with a company a financial services company yeah. based in the city mm-hmm. um, long long time ago I was in my 20s um, and they were a big zhuzhi life uh, insurance based product yeah. sales people um, in big big you know big floors of 150 people but it was a particular team who were by a long, long chalk. And this is what started my thought process. Mm. Um, and they were, you would never guess what industry or what what jobs they had before they became life insurance salespeople. Mm. And they were incredible. And, I, and they were a whole team full of doctors. Not one of them was a big personality. Not one of them was, you know, that that out that, you know, salesperson. Yeah, I know I'm flashy and flowery and, you know, I've got crazy hair and I wave my hands about and all that. But these people were dead serious, you know, but the thing which the thing which made them massively successful is they asked all the right. They're triage. They asked the right questions. Yeah. I think if you have you I can I basically and I'm going to put it out there I can train a cha- trained monkey to be an amazing salesperson <laughs> process, which I use because this is not for salespeople yeah. you yeah. know people get a huge amount out of it yeah. I can literally train anybody to be mm. successful in sales and it doesn't matter about your personality brilliant you know? brilliant well, love it. Absolutely love it. I was going to say when you said about the doctors things, the thing with doctors, they sit there talking to people all day as well. So they build far more trust than the majority of people. Um, they're given it in the first place. But they're also, I, I think, good doctors are people who are fairly authentic as well. And I think yep. my point was more around those that can connect with people. You can't you, you, you can't buy that. It's a skill. I totally agree. I don't think you need to be out there. I don't think you need to be extroverted. I don't think you need to be loud and you know, and, and, and colourful, boisterous and all those sorts of things. I think some of the best salespeople I've ever worked with have, have been introverts, calm, quiet, controlled, yeah. but they've always been good at connecting with people. They've always been good at connection. And that's been an authentic thing that that, that, that they have that yeah. hasn't been trained. It's just their personality. Yeah. And we are hardwired. You know, we are hardwired. It's in our DNA for yeah. human connection. You know, and I think if you understand that the best sales training I ever went on and I tell people this and they go, what? What are you talking about? Best sales training course I ever went on was a person centered counseling course. Mm. And people go, what? What are you talking about? You're, you're, you're bonkers, woman. I mean, you know, most people think of bonkers anyway, right? <laughs> but that's um, just a side, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 we'll just nod wisely for that yeah. one. Um, but what counsellors do, and what the t- I was sitting there with a whole load of really fluffy, you know, would-be social workers, counsellors, therapists, all of that sort of stuff. And they were teaching you this stuff. And what they do is they create a safe space 
for the person. You then ask lots of questions, drawing in their wants, their needs, their experiences and all of that sort of stuff. And what it, and then they reflect it back. They listen. They take it all on board, you know, all of this stuff. And what that what that does is it fast tracks and turbocharges that trust relationship. This is like hardcore psychological connection stuff, right? And that's what you do when you actually put yourself aside, take yourself out of the equation and just prepare a great space for somebody else to put their stuff into. Mm. It's at that point they get to feel like they're in safe hands. They get to feel trust. And that's all sales is. It's about giving people enough reassurance and warmth and comfort and trust and safety to be able to give you their money, to, to, you know, to trust you with their projects, their business, their team, their success, yeah. their career. I mean, some of these things that people are buying are career changing purchases, mm. you know, and understanding what that what that is for other people and, and putting yourself in your customer's shoes is so, so important. And it changes everything energetically. And I think there needs to be more of that. There needs to be more heart, more emotion, more connection. That's what we need. How do you okay. train into someone there? Because I, you, you, you made a very uh, brave um, claim earlier that I, love, <laughs> I absolutely love um that you know you can literally take a take a monkey and train them how to sell so where, where do let's maybe move a stage on from monkey and go to graduate <laughs> um i don't know we could start start at, you know start at a, a human at least but somebody that's that's i mean you know probably your 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 your, your example is similar to you know it's, it's take a grab no experience really raw got some good personality traits but probably been told to fall into sales because they're good at talking to people or you know they've got the gift of the gab that's the old one yeah isn't it? yeah <laughs> um where, where do you start with that process what's your what, what's your real focal point I start with really getting people to understand that it isn't about them it's mm. about the customer and I think the and the processes and the thought paths and the exercises I take people through are about repurposing their process or their thought trail and about understanding what the bet what you know who who is your customer what's the persona who are they what do they do what are their stresses you know how do they do that then take them through like what are the benefits to them why why mm. should they care about you why should they care about your product and then having a look at right okay what are the what are the questions that you can create to be able to take your person once you've engaged with them and you've got them on side what are the questions you need to ask them to pull them through their buying journey it's not about you it's not about your features not about your products not about your sales target it's not about what happened last week or today or tomorrow whatever it's about them it's about you know really being present and Mm. i teach them you know therapy level listening techniques you know and all of this so you can hear what people are saying and you can hear what they're not saying and also immediacy skills you know asking that thing that elephant in the room that difficult question ask those killer questions because if you can do that you'll uncover all of their needs their beliefs their values you pull it all out and and you know and it really is if you want to do a great job and we all want to be liked and we all want to do a great job and we all want to be rewarded for what it is that we do and we're passionate about and I think if you do that and you draw it out from other people that something really magical happens you know and you really connect and and create those relationships because that's all it is it's just about engaging connecting looking Mm. after people and making sure that they look great Mm. can you give us an example of you talked about the elephant in the room and those those big brave questions I, i totally agree by the way i think they differentiate a lot of sales conversations um can you give maybe some of the people out there that are individual contributors early career stage at the moment thinking, well, what does she mean by that? What kind of questions should I be asking? And give maybe one or two examples. Yeah, I mean, I I, I guess there's the I kind of I like to come things that are, uh, uh, from a positive point of view rather than a negative point of view because you can you can change an awful lot of salespeople. What we do is we ask questions from a negative point of view. It's mm-hmm. like. What are your pain points? What are the problems we're looking to solve? So they they kind of come in as like, we want to be prob, you know, I think they've almost 
misaligned kind of making it about them making it about a solution and they've misaligned that a little bit mm. i asking the really tough questions it's like okay we've talked about this 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 and this but you really need to ask you know what are the reasons why you wouldn't go ahead mm. actually mm. quite people out as well mm. as qualifying people in I think being really authentic the great questions I like to ask are things like things that that really kind of link into like the limbic brain so it's I, I tend to use a lot of things called softeners so mm. I say right okay if you were the I don't know insurance fairy for the day what <laughs> would you what policy would you create you know what you know what what do you what would you want from that what would it look like what would it feel like you know mm. and, and and you know and, and 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 you know what would make you super excited but also those killer questions when you know you went as a as a person you know for well you, they're, they're the questions that will blow a deal out of the yeah. water yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, okay, right. But what what are the actual challenges for you for getting this deal through? Because you are my, you're the decision maker, you're my contact, but I know you need to sell this to the rest of the organization. So what are the what are the barriers? What are you gonna face? What are the things that are gonna stop this in its tracks? What concerns do you have? You know, all of those kinds of questions. What concerns? Mm. You know, it's, it's the same as if you um even if you're in a, we all sell, right? Even if you're in an interview, the last thing I've always said to someone is like, okay, so you say this, you say that I'm great, you say that my product is great, you say that I'm great, it's going to be brilliant for this, it's going to be brilliant for this um, position. But what concerns do you have about this deal, about the cost, about whatever it is? What concerns do you have about me, about the pr product in this process? Mm. You know, and and give people an opportunity to exit or give them an opportunity to voice their concerns and what they're worried about, because you might not have uncovered them. So it's like, oh, you know, I could be sitting here as a purchaser going, I really want to do this. And she sounds really great. And I really trust her and all of this sort of stuff. But I'm worried that this is on the expensive side and I'm not sure how I'm going to demonstrate value to my FD or to CFO. Yeah. You know, so it's about asking those questions. What do you need? What do you what do you need? What do you need for me to support you? You know, what's going to blow this out of the water? Do you see any impediments? What does that look like? Because you all have sent some impediments anyway. Yeah, yeah. Ah, interesting. I have some good examples there. I'm keen, I'm keen to talk about a word. You you've used it several times, um, and you used it pre-hit and record on this as well about purpose. Yes. So salespeople having purpose. And I know that's obviously something that, that that means something to you and you feel you can talk around what does it what does having purpose mean in a sales role and, and why is it so important I think having purpose I mean for me like I say I'm the world's most reluctant salesperson having purpose and passion is something which I don't think I could do a sales job without mm. so what is my purpose so if you've got a company you know has it got a transformational product? Does it make a difference out there? You know, what is the difference that you're making? You know, who, because once you know what the difference is that you're making, and it is important to make a difference. I mean, we're not, it's not like we're egotistical or narcissistic, but we all want to make a difference in this world, right? We all want to make it a little bit better or shinier or, you know, have just, just, just make the sunshine, mm. you know. So what does your product do? How does it light up for other people? What is the purpose of it? You know, and I think if you struggle to identify what your pa passion and purpose is within your role, within your company, within your product, and you can't change it, then maybe it's about repurposing yourself, right? <laughs> you know, because you do have to have purpose. And second, you, second it changes from just being a product to having a purpose, the energy changes. And I know yeah. I talk about this hokey energy change, but it fundamentally does. It, it it resonates in your voice. It resonates in your commitment. It resonates in your authenticity, in yeah. your personality, all of those kinds of things. And I think having purpose and having clear goal. Now, it might not just be that there's a purpose for the product. It could be that the organisation you work for mm. has a shared purpose, that we're all together. We're yeah. as a team. We're wanting to achieve this. And you'll see it in all great companies, all great sports teams. All, you know, we all have a purpose. What is our goal? What's our, mm -hmm. you know, 
Why are we here? What mm. are we doing? I know that's usually something you only do after several bottles of wine at three o'clock <laughs> in the morning. But fundamentally, you just have to say, why? Why am I doing this? What is my why? You know, it's so, so important. Yeah. What's, my, what's my purpose? Because if you understand what's driving you, if you understand who you are, then energetically the universe will answer that. And mm. the way you speak to people will change. And, and can somebody's purpose, let's say I'm, I don't know, give an example, 25 years old, working for a software company, I'm out selling a piece of software in sales tech or martech or fintech or whatever it might be. Yeah. Can that person adopt a company's purpose and feel rewarded and aligned with that? Or does an individual person need to have their own purpose and for that to fit along, alongside an organization's purpose? Because my purpose might be career driven, lifestyle driven, yeah. providing for a family, it could be anything. A company's yeah. purpose could be growth driven, giving back to cu customers, whatever, you know, and those, do those two things need to be on the same page and align? Or do you tend to find that people need to buy into the company purpose and adopt that? I think like any good relationship, mm. if your values aren't aligned, then it's mm. not going to work. It doesn't matter how hot they are or how flashy they are or what, you know, all of that or what they bring to the table. If your values don't align, it's never going to last. It could yeah. be something that's a stepping stone along the way. So I do think that for me, I've always had to buy into the purpose and the company and all of that sort of stuff because I want to I know full well that I work best when I'm I collaborate and I need to collaborate with people who are like-minded who are you know have joined values joined purpose joined passions you know and I think that's incredibly important not only for the salespeople who are looking at looking at that and looking to find that because that's quite difficult in itself yeah. but also sales leaders who are looking to create that because actually the best sales people and the best sales teams and the most successful sales teams are those who the leadership the company the product has inspired our hearts and minds um, mm. connection with the people in their teams and mm. everybody is there on the journey with you there is nothing worse than us being a salesperson and having to be that resilient and feeling alone in the world yeah. with a team with a collaboration with people with fixed goals you know and in the same room I know that's mm. not something we've been able to do <laughs> you know, getting off the energy of others isn't something oh, yeah, we've necessarily yeah. been you know able to do and it's made our jobs so much harder but I think without those values without those aligned values mm. you're probably in the wrong space yeah. and I think you have to buy in 100% mm. because if you don't buy it then why the hell are your customers going to buy else. it? I, do you know what I was waiting for you to say something which which um, I, I'm not sure if you've, you've uh, put two and two together on it but the way you were talking about organizations having to to bring people on the cultural journey and get them to buy in, maybe think of your book title, they're pulling them in rather than pushing them along. And I think it's a really good analogy you can carry across because actually as an organization, we've got a responsibility to sell people on our purpose and to sell people on why they should be a part of that journey and why they should believe in it and buy into it. Same yeah. principle, right? It works right across the whole, yep. the, whole um, the, the, the whole thing really. So yeah, it's really, really yeah. interesting. Definitely. And I think, you know, uh, interestingly, an awful lot of sales leaders have just been the best salesperson and yeah. the best salesperson yeah. um, and the most successful salesperson, especially when they're quite focused on their own needs, aren't the right people to lead sales because it is about them rather than yeah. about their teams. Yeah. And I think that it's really interesting that you know, the best leaders and the best sales leaders mm. are, you know, quite quiet people, um, yeah. but are very people focused. And it's about, you know, almost like that servant leadership thing mm. you know, that you get in the army where you're, you know, you're asking people on a daily basis to put themselves on the line, just the same as, you know, you know, coaching a rugby team. I always go back to my rugby analogies because I'm a massive fan. I've been playing for years and years and years, still at 55, still playing rugby Good idea. like a nutter. But you put your body on the line, you put your heart on the line. You know, I think that wholehearted, you know, uh, 
energetic kind of yeah I think I think doing things in a wholehearted authentic way where people can join you on that on that ride you know not just your customers but your leadership but the people around you the rest of the other sections of the business you know making sure that you have everybody you know with you yeah. on that ride is 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 massively empowering especially on the dark days right yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Do you know, Lisa, I've loved talking to you. I think there's there's two things I want to do. One yeah. is give you the chance to tell people where on earth they can go and find this book. <laughs> and the other is give you the chance just to say, who can you as Sales Geek help and who should be talking to you and, and how can they get in touch with you as well? Um, well, my book is available globally on Amazon. So wherever in the world this goes out to, all you need to do is look it up. Lisa Ansel, push not pull, not push a revolution in selling for people who hate it. You can find me on LinkedIn and who can we help? Well, sales geek do things massively different you know you've only got to listen to what i do how i speak you know it's much aligned with those and who can we help i think we 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 sort of started off being taken up by an awful lot of SMEs, but I think now, you know, there's a lot of serious people who are looking at us very unserious people <laughs> who are having so much fun with this. Um, and I think it's I think we're accessible to everybody really. Yeah. Um, because the great thing with Sales Geek is we give back so much. Mm. So we have our free app, so everybody can download our free app and have a sales trainer, a Sales Geek trainer in their pocket, 24-7 to, to pick them up when they're down. It's free. You can get that on iOS and on um, uh, uh, on um, the other one. <laughs> and, 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 yeah, I always forget being such an Apple geek, right? Um, <laughs> Yeah, the so, other ones don't matter, um, do they? Don't worry about yeah, it. <laughs> exactly. And there's loads of free stuff. We we desperately all we you know we know there's an awful lot of people that won't necessarily be able to afford our services. We're not inexpensive, but we're worth every penny, and we'll prove mm. it. Um, so it's it's about having that free stuff, getting a taster, get on board with our free seminar seminars, get all the free stuff that they want to do, and then if there's a if there's something that you feel you want to change or even if you don't know what it is you have to change we have skills gap analysis which for the most part we give away we give away more than we actually actually get paid for i think sometimes <laughs> um so yeah so it's a case of you know just just come and talk to us find me on linkedin look up sales geek everybody's on there our our values are on there who we are, are on there you know how we do the things we do are on there and if it resonates with you if you believe what we believe then guess what come and join the fun bus because it's brilliant <laughs> i don't think we've had anyone say fun bus on the po podcast before that's a good it's a first if nothing else <laughs> <laughs> well there you go I like to change this up bring something a little bit different to the table they say i think no. i'm legit <laughs> yeah you absolutely lisa it's been an absolute pleasure thank you so much you brought so much energy to this discussion and i've loved listening to you genuinely i can you. i can see you'd be a lot of fun to work with if nothing else as well so thank you very much for everything you've added to the to the conversations and we'll speak to you again very soon yeah, thank you so much for inviting me. It's been an absolute blast. Thank you.